Hello, uh, Trev here. I've got my tow float and I'm just halfway through my sports relief swim challenge um, for um, September, sw swimming um, 15,000 meters in September. So I thought I'd come down to Rivermead. I've not been for a while. Someone was asking about where Rivermead is. So this is Rivermead Road. So you can see Rivermead Road. And I did actually clear this sign. So you can see it, it was very overgrown. Someone's left a scooter. <laughs> there, but Rivermead Road, um, Rivermead Nature Park, signed done by M Manny, my friend, who's an artist. And yeah, you can kind of see here is Rivermead. Over there is Court Place um, Gardens. No, Court Place. So the building, uh, the new kind of houses around Ifley Church. I did go down to Ifley Church the other day, and um, that path is going to be open hopefully by the end of September to make a through route. Um, to Rivermead so you can access it from the church but at the moment if you were at Ifley Church you'd kind of come round to Rivermead Road and you come in the gate that I've just got through um, so yeah if you've not already checked out my kind of vlogs on the path from Rivermead to Stam Sanford um, then I've got quite a few that you can kind of have a look at and I will be updating it um, <laughs> there's a friendly cat hello and yeah they've cleared all this so We've just cleared that in there. The chalk, I believe, chalk stream, you can see kind of like a marshland, really kind of um, unusual for wildlife, real kind of site. Of, well, it's, it's not designated, I don't think, as a site of national interest, but it's sort of certainly um, got a very kind of interesting pH, I was told by Beebout, which is a... Um, <laughs> Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire Wildlife Trust. So to talk um, there. Oh. So yeah, just make your way down to the river and I'll show you what I've got in my tow float. And my aim is to swim towards Kennington, see if I can get to Kennington, sort of maybe to Rose Island, maybe a bit before Rose Island. And yeah, I know this stretch of river well, although I've not swum it for a while. So um, Yeah, there are a couple of things to talk about in terms of sort of safety and what I've got in my tow float and I'm wearing sort of some sh some shoes, sort of swim shoes. Um, and also, yeah, in terms of get out points. So I've done quite a bit of swimming, so I'm used to it, but um, the risks might be sort of getting cold. Um, there might be some debris because it's been raining a, a bit. And yeah, knowing your get out points um, if it doesn't go to plan, it's very important if you're getting into, into the river. Obviously, I've got a tow float, so that's very useful. It's cold, so I'm going to wear a wetsuit. So I've got kind of this old retro wetsuit um, to keep me warmer, so I can be in for a little bit longer. Um, and in my, in my kind of backpack, I've got a couple of bottles of water, a couple of apples, uh, a few crisps, so sort of, sort of snacks. Um, a microfiber towel. So a microfiber towel is sort of really thin, which is a great investment if you're doing outdoor sort of activity because it does soak up a lot. Um, here we are at the River Mead. It's looking beautiful, isn't it? Let's just have a little look. <laughs> um, yeah, I've not been here very much at all. So it was very stormy last night frosted last night as I saw on the news but it's meant to be getting warmer again but the rest of the day is meant to be sunny we can see the sun so let me just show you the microfiber towel here so it's sort of really thin so you know a normal towel would be you know three times the thick thickness and you know really kind of weighty whereas this is sort of very light but still has the kind of like the capacity to to soak up a lot of water so if you're going swimming and I'm going to take all of my kit from here up to Kennington and then possibly walk walk back um, and then yeah I've got it all with me so if I if I'm going for a little dip I might have a, a thicker towel and just sort of like you know lay it on the riverbank or whatever but microfiber towels are really quite useful for this sort of adventure yeah very very sunny um, and yeah so a couple of couple of drinks um, 
this is quite cool because it's like um, it's a float but it also has like a waterproof pocket so I'm going to put my phone in it which is going to record where I've been so I know how far I've got um, gone to log it um, yeah and see a bit more river mead down there and yeah I'll catch up with you once I've done my swim to let you know how I've got on and um, thank you again to um, everyone that's sponsored me and Adrian's just sponsored me today but there's still half of the month left so you can still sponsor me for sports relief and yeah okay see you in a sec Okay, so I've just got to the start of Kennington Meadows, which I think I'm going to stop at because it's a little bit cold today. You can see Rose Island just in the distance. Um, and I swam 750 metres, which is is great. It's fine for me. So I need to average about 500 metres a day. So swimming a bit more than 500 metres is great because it means if I have a day off or whatever, that that's still going to get my challenge done. So I was going to kind of talk a little bit more about safety. So the river pollution um, has become quite a big risk. I don't see many, many people swimming in the river um, these days, which is sad. I mean, I did sort of last couple of years see quite a few people swimming, but I haven't seen anyone swimming in the river really at all. I've still been to the been down to the riverside quite a bit, but um, yeah. It's murky. I wouldn't say it's sort of more polluted um, than normal, but it has rained a lot the last couple of days, so I've no doubt that there is sewage in there. But as a consequence, I don't put my head under um, anymore, um, which is a little bit sad because when it's freezing cold, my body is cold and my head is still sort of fairly hot, or that's the kind of sensation I get in my mind. So normally when I'm adjusting to a temperature, I like, you know, the back of my neck to get the same temperature and then I kind of regulate and kind of, it's a little bit harder if part of you isn't wet <laughs> to sort of regulate the temperature. So it kind of almost makes the swim a little bit, um, a little bit harder in cold water, but sometimes i guess i would put my face in but um yeah there's there's just a bigger a bigger risk of, of getting ill and and when we're saying ill it's it's normally sort of things like diarrhea or sickness so those sorts of things it can it can get worse in in um some cases but generally that's that's what we're meaning by by getting un, un, unwell um in terms of yeah you can get a few cases of more severe things but yeah it's not pleasant so so yeah I don't want to swallow it obviously so if you're doing front crawls I've been learning front crawl in the pool this um this month for the swim challenge and you know you're putting your head in sort of every stroke or whatever and some water does go through the sides of your mouth it also can come through your nose and in your ears the other big one is when you get out so just to to rinse your hands before putting your hands in your mouth which I've I've done so um yeah, there's, a, there's still a small risk because I've not washed them with soap, I've not sanitised my hands, but, you know, there's all there's risk and there's there's risk. So for me, the kind of the health benefits of being out in this lovely nature, um, Kennington near Oxford, um, outweighs the sort of the risk of, of potentially getting ill from um, polluted water. But yeah, hopefully they'll they'll clean, <laughs> they'll clean, clean up the river at some point. Um, yeah, um, this is the Cali Branch Line. I did a video about the Cali Branch Line. Um, so as we go in that way to Littlemore and Cowley um, and the, the other way it sort of joins the main line over there um, yeah so it's a little kind of extra bit of bit of train line that isn't really used other than for freight at the moment but it, it potentially might be in the future which would be exciting um, was there anything else I was going to say yeah okay so sports relief I've got my sports relief t-shirt on um, is um, the sort of sister charity of Comic Relief. So they kind of alternate, if you don't know about it, um, Comic Relief and Sports Relief help vulnerable people in this country and in other countries as well. Um, so, and to have access to, to sports equipment particularly. Um, but yeah, kind of raising money through sort of entertainment and sports challenges. So that's why I'm doing it. I kind of, I've, I've grown up obviously, as, as a lot of us have with um, Comic Relief and Sports Relief is kind of 
yeah, it's a, a newer version of it. Um, I remember watching Comic Relief every year and stuff. So this is kind of a nice way to sort of link in with a charity. But I know I do lots of sporting charities, but if you do want to sponsor, sponsor me or are particularly interested in sports relief, then then please do um, sponsor me. Any, any amount is gratefully received by them. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to kind of film a little bit maybe on my walk back. So I've kind of got my boots off, got dry. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing about safety is kind of like... Make sure you can get dry afterwards because being cold in the water is one thing, but you, your temperature does drop when you, when you get out. So part of me didn't want to swim all the way to Rose Island and um, get over cold. So I got out before I started to dip um, and I got dry very quickly. Before I started recording the video, I kind of got out of the wetsuit. I sort of dried my dried myself. And even if you don't have clothes, actually wet clothes are the worst. So, you know, even taking <laughs> taking all your clothes off. Um, but, you know, you kind of don't want to get to the extreme where you are that cold, really. You want to sort of stay, stay, stay safe, really. But I, lo I love wild swimming and cold swimming. So yeah, do do investigate it if you're interested in doing it, and maybe I'll do a couple of swims in the in the river before the challenge is up. Okay, so I'm just coming off the Southern Bypass Bridge. So this is into River Mead. And I just want to have a little look down to see if there's any rubbish and maybe see this path. So you've got two little paths to go down. I'm not sure if bare feet is the best footwear. There is another entrance down there, but I'm just going to have to go Let's do this one, let's do this one, because I've never really done this one, and it looks a little bit more nature, nature-y. Um, so I did do a video, like I say, with path clearing. Oh yeah, that looks great. So I, d I remember cutting this branch, so it wasn't accessible before. That looks like a quite, quite an old sort of sand, concrete sand thing. Like it's been there for for many many years, but um, to go down here, a bit muddy, a bit slippy. Hopefully, I don't slip over. <laughs> Safety first. Come on. Okay, so yeah, uh, partly because I'm carrying my tow float as well as a camera. Um, okay, so we can have a little look through there at the bridge, and in terms of litter, I didn't do a massive follow up. Um, of our litter pick at with good gym but um so i just want to have a quick quick look bearing in mind that i'm in bare feet um whoop, 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 whoop. the bridge whoop, whoop, whoop. okay let's see how it looks this is looking great so this path so i'm assuming people are using it quite a bit oh amazing okay so the mattresses have been taken. There is no litter, pretty much, that I can see, which is really, really good. Um, 
there is still the motorbike, which um, we talked about before, and it's just really heavy. <laughs> but um, I do remember seeing them pull that motorbike out, and they were determined to sell it for scrap. And I really <laughs> hope they might come back and dismantle it. And yeah, they seem to think they're going to get lots of money for it. But basically, to get it to get it kind of um, moved from down here would be good. But that's looking pretty good. I haven't done the whole path, obviously. I'll probably do, wait until the access from Ifley is open, and then I'll do like a kind of a, a whole route path. But um, that is looking good. I don't know where the sand is from, but that um, that's made quite a nice thing. Actually, I can probably even walk into the stream just to clear some of that mud. <laughs> from my feet and I'll get muddy again no doubt um okay and now we're in Rivermead so maybe if I'm walking back I might as well show you the other route of Rivermead so this is the reverse of um the coming in coming into the Sanford path that I normally show you um <clears throat> so I don't know that I've really covered this half of River Mead at all. Um, so that bridge um, to the left is kind of that entry point of River Mead and to the right is the entrance. I think I'm probably just going to show you otherwise it's not overly clear how to orientate. So yeah, we came down town there earlier in this video and went to the river just, just there. There's lots of paths on the way to Ifley that way. So this is like the crossroads, but the other side of Rivermead is over here. So I'm gonna walk back this way and just give you a little, a little bit of a bonus tour um, of the other half of Rivermead. So you've got some really nice woodland and very mature trees. It is next to the Southern Bypass, but you wouldn't really know. I mean, like you can kind of like block that out. Um, you can hear the odd sort of like big lorry or whatever. And certainly this side is closer to the road than the other side is. So it's more prominent this side, but. Hopefully you can hear the birds as well. So this side is a little bit louder and you can see there's a fork here. Let's go down this way. So I am still in bare feet, mindful of any other bits of, I don't know, glass doesn't look like there is any glass which is good but any sort of litter from the past uh, yeah this is a bit nicer on on grass oh wow <laughs> not seen that before that sort of like looks almost like a <laughs> cool arch yeah isn't that cool take a photo of that But yeah, so here is again a nice little path down. You can see a lorry going past the ring road. That's another the little kind of slope back down into it that's been there ever since I've known River Mead, but for many, many years. Um, so yeah, the new entrance right by the bridge is kind of a little bit steeper. No, I was going to say probably it's about the same. Um, I wouldn't say that's any easier to scramble down um, but yeah so there's a couple of ways to come come into Rivermead from the bypass and if we go here again we've got a little kind of choice a crossroads to go up so we go around the edge I think this just goes around another bit of field but it'll show you um, I guess the size so now we're we're pretty much right next to the road so you know this is the loudest loudest point um, 
and I know some people that live down River Mead Road and yeah I guess you get used to it but yeah it's a consistent noise the southern bypass is busy okay but lovely to have a nature space right next to it and yeah still many people don't know about River Mead I kind of still talk to people and say oh where's River Mead what's that what's that uh, nature reserve um, so we've got this little route around we've done little community events where we've used this little clearing here for sort of picnics and stuff <laughs> which is quite nice and you've got these little signs as well if you're kind of coming down with kids you can kind of um, let's get that so the wren that sort of information things and they've done a few kind of at various points little bits of kind of getting getting people involved with River Mead um, friends of River Mead and various things but yeah so this is going right the way around so I feel quite nice that I've not seen this bit of River Mead for a while this side of it well, I'm gonna come all the way out to my to my bike um, and yeah I just thought I'd document it for those of you interested in the whole reserve Okay, and then we're coming back to the en entrance to River Mead. So, this might be familiar from other videos, this bit. And you can see yeah, the nature trails on this. And yeah, the information boards. And Let's go out through the gate. So yeah, here we are at the start. So yeah, thanks for watching the video all the way through and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.